Put your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy SD Booker. Thanks for joining me. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share the content. Go to a toast to the men.com. Check out the website. Man, I want to do a reaction. I'm going to do a reaction uh, to a video of a young man by the name of Corey Jones. And that's the name of his YouTube channel, Corey Jones. This brother makes some great content. And I came across this video of his, this video in particular of his, man, maybe a few months ago, maybe three months ago. And, uh, man, I just thought it was so impactful. I thought we can learn a lot from it. And I respected this brother's transparency and honesty uh, from his perspective. You know, we got to we gotta always say from our per perspective or someone's perspective, because that may be their truth, the way they see it through their lens. But uh, the other party involved in the situation may see it through another lens. Uh, but all in all, both people are telling their truth from their perspective. But I do respect this brother's transparency. And uh, man, uh, this this video is called "I Was Married: My Divorce Story." Corey Jones. Man, let me uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it, toasters. I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm really about to talk about this right now. This is crazy, man. Oh my gosh. I want to say this storytelling is cleansing telling your story in particular is very cleansing uh, this brother said he he held in a lot and he's finally gotten to the point where he wants to tell his story you know that's uh that's very important on different levels just on a personal level man holding stuff in can uh fester and, and really become a cancer in you like figuratively speaking and literally uh, become a cancer so it's good to cleanse it's good to release you got to release uh, whether you gotta uh, speak on it uh, shout cry it, you have to release or uh, that stuff stays bottled up inside of you and can turn into a cancer and really destroy you uh, this guy's case in particular he's a content creator he's a public figure and so his viewers subscribers have gotten used to you know his his ex-woman being around they know he was married uh so that's part of his brand so when things happen unfortunately or fortunately you know um when you're a content creator and you got followers you got people that support you you got to be transparent you kind of got to keep them up to date you know you may not have to go into detail but you got to keep them up to date you can't just flip the script and change up the brand without give, giving them some kind of update you know uh that's just the way it is you know it's a business somewhat so it is a business and uh you gotta let your your clientele or your audience know what's up what's going on and so you know i respect this brother let's get into it 
Let me try to answer here. So, in 2017, um, I got married. I got married to this girl that I've been with throughout college, you know what I'm saying? Mostly through college. Um, and we were together, you know, we could as well. And I'll say this, and I'm going to be paused throughout. I'll try to keep it at a minimum. But the brother said he got married in 2017, and he also stated he started his YouTube channel in 2017. I, I think that's that's too close. I think he needed uh, to wait to build, to establish uh, some time with his, his new bride, his wife, even though they probably dated for a while. You know, this is a new chapter in his life. And so I think he really need to focus on, on the home and land that foundation. You know, it'd be no different if you get married and you're having to travel uh, or or, or uh, be deployed in the military to a different country within the first few months or the first year of a marriage. Man, that's, that's rough. That's really rough, man. I don't care how long you've been dating. There's a switch that goes on or off when you get married. You know, and uh, especially in a woman's head, you know, things change when, when you get married. You could have dated 10, 15 years. But when you get married, there's something that goes off or on in her head. And so I think he needs to really focus on the marriage and not start a YouTube channel. Uh, you know, because uh, this world is full throttle in the YouTube channel. So, you know, these things take time, man, to, to create, to, to build, to edit. It takes time. So, yeah, just a... Just something I noticed, an observation. And, you know, decided to jump the boom and be bonded forever, you know what I'm saying? Everything felt right. Everything felt like, you know, it was the right thing to do, the next step to do. Um, you know, since we've been together for a good little minute, um, you know, people kind of looked up to us as that black couple in school and that couple that just stood through everything, you know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, you know, we decided to get married, you know. Uh, honestly, was that the best move? <laughs> At the time, it felt like it, you know. Um, but, you know. I spoke on this a few videos ago, being intentional. Uh, they were not intentional when they got married. You got to look at what do we, what is the point of us getting married? What is the reason? Uh, what do we hope to create, to manifest, to uh, to build? What are we doing? What is what is the goal? What is the mission of us getting married? They were not intentional. Uh, sounds like they did it because he felt that was a natural expectation. That was a natural next step. Uh, from what other people thought and guess what he thought also just a natural step because they've been together so long and I, I that's not a good reason brothers it's not a good reason and not only that they're young man they dated in high school that's another thing man you gotta you gotta live a little bit i think nowadays uh grow you know experience some things you know 30 40 50 years ago it was different there wasn't access to much but nowadays, man, there's so much temptation. There's always been temptation, but now it's on a different level. It's on a totally different level. And so, uh, yeah, for, to get married young, man, that's quite a challenge. Man, it's just, it's just so much, man. It's so much. There was a time women didn't engage in certain things. Women didn't go to the bar. Women didn't go to the club. You know, that was for a certain type of single woman, not even just a single woman. A certain type of single woman that went to the bars and the clubs and the lounges 50, 60, 70 years ago. Back then, if you went to a club or a lounge or a bar as a woman, most of the times you were with a man, your man. But a certain type of single woman into those spots. Nowadays, you got every type of woman entering those spots. Uh, and and, and uh, just so much, so much on the Internet. So much materialism. They want this. They want that. For men too, you know, uh, access to everything, you know, uh, sex, uh, material things also. And so, to have to contend with that, battle with that, and be married at such a young age where you're kind of inexperienced, man, that's that's quite 
a battle to face. And nowadays, I don't know if I would suggest that for anyone. Um, you know, so it's tricky, man. Sometimes I think you should get married young to stay out of trouble. But you got to want to stay out of trouble. You know, you got to want to stay out of trouble and get married young. But if you tempt it, if you still peeking over the fence and wondering what's over there and you get married, there's going to be trouble. So, yeah, but be intentional, man, when you get married. Have a goal, have a focus, have a mission of what you want to manifest and create as a couple. You know, sometimes you can't let time determine what's truly going on and what's truly there. Um, but, yeah, we decided to get married and, and, you know, take that step towards our lives, move from an apartment into a couple of homes. I know some of you all probably seen some of my old vlogs where we moved from a house to another house, but we was renting, just trying to find a home that we liked to, liked to rent until we bought a home, but we ended up renting a home. And, um, of course, that was in the town that my alma mater is in, so if you know, you know. Um, so we, you know, moved in together, everything is going good, and, you know, um, you know, once we got married, it was before we got married, there really was never no hiccups or anything like that. At least that I didn't suspect there was no type of uh, any, there wasn't really any red flags, you know what I'm saying? Um, Again, folks, live alone uh, for a while before you start moving in with each other. Um, I've known several men who, uh, when venturing out of their mother's home or their parents' home, they automatically went inside the home of a woman or moved in together with a woman, and they never uh, lived on their own. Uh, you know, that's that's just not good. Yeah, you got to know how to live on your own and uh, how to be alone. Uh, learn yourself. But this brother went from his parents' home to a dorm to living with a woman. No alone time, no time to learn himself, his likes and dislikes, to be alone, to uh, self-analyze himself, to gather his thoughts and learn who he is. His brother's young, man. He's young. And same with her. She hasn't had time. And like I said, man, we're in this new age. There's a lot out there. I think the only red flag that was in me was like, I was like, yo, you know, we need to move from this state in order to be prosperous, you know, in order to make a name for ourselves, build build wealth and, and all that good stuff. Good choice. Good choice. Great choice. Move away. Great choice, man. Now, granted, um, I was saying that because there wasn't many opportunity in, I'm going to say, there wasn't many opportunities in South Carolina for anyone who recently graduated. Now, I was a management major, hospitality management major. Started off in the hotel industry, worked front desk, became assistant director of rooms very shortly after that. Still wasn't paying that much. Ended up working at the University of South Carolina as an admissions counselor. And I started off making $28,000. So check this out. And I talked about this yesterday. Uh, brothers, establish yourself. Establish yourself. Uh, most women... And, and, and rightfully so, uh, I guess. Well, I guess I'm a traditionalist. Uh, they're going to expect you to pay the majority of the bills. That's just where it is. Uh, if not, it's like you guys are roommates. So 28000 a year, man, that comes out to around $13 uh, or $14 an hour. That's what that is. If you uh, multiply uh, $14 hours times 2080 uh, billing, billing hours. Let's see what that is. I'm just estimating. Let's see what that is. 14 times 2,080 billable hours. Right at 29,000. So he's around $13.50. And he has a woman. He has a wife. She's expecting him to pay the majority of the bills. She's young. Well, I don't care if she's young or older. She wants certain things, you know, designer things. She, you know, women spend, women cost. 
makeup, hair, nails. They eat. They eat. They eat more than us, fellas. They eat out more than us. Uh, they love to eat. Man, they, they cost. And so this brother's making around thirteen dollars and fifty cents, and he has a wife. Uh, and so that's just what it is, brothers. That's what it is. Let's see. Twenty-eight thousand dollars. A walking twenty-eight thousand dollars there, and that was a struggle because I loved the job and I loved what I did there, but it wasn't enough to provide for me and her, even though she had a job. But it was still kind of like a little bit of a struggle. So I think that kind of helped play into what happened in the marriage, maybe. But those are conversations that you don't really have. Um, before so he loved the job he loved what he did but he did not make enough as a married man now he probably could have did well did okay as a single man just uh supporting himself and so you know that's the thing man he got married too young it was not established you know that's that's just what it is man i got married young was not established uh was 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 hustling and doing customer service uh, just not making enough, man. With a child on the way at the time, was not making enough. Uh, get involved in things you don't really want to get involved in because uh, you got a woman, you got a child, you want to survive, you want to give her some things uh, that she's in, she enjoys and wants. So, man, you take risk, or you know, you just uh, you suffer and endure. But the thing is, man, you shouldn't get married in the first place until you are established, until you know you can take care of yourself and a woman and, uh, you know, a child if a child is brought into the world. Yeah, so, yeah, this man is behind the eight ball. Man, I've been here. I, I know what's going on through this guy's head. I'm telling you. And you're kind of just going through life together. And if someone is for you, they're going to be for you no matter what your salary is, no matter this and that, the connection that y'all have. Don't believe that. <laughs> Don't believe that, man. Uh, to an extent, you know, to an extent, a woman will endure with you. To an extent. Uh, but somewhere along the line, man, you're going to have to cash in, show and prove that uh, you are. And you you are who you say you are. You know, she'll, she'll, she'll tag along and support only so long and motivate only so long. But, man, you're going to have to show and prove eventually. So I agree with him to an extent. Really, you know, um, to be strong enough to look past that. But anyway, let's fast forward. So, yeah, um, we ended up getting married, you know, um, in October of 2017. Jumped the boom. Everything went well. Um, and it, it was good, you know what I'm saying? But uh, let's fast forward to the beginning of 2018. So not even a year, not even barely six months in, um, you know, it was around Mother's Day, um, and, you know, her family came to the house, we grilled, a couple of my family members and friends came to the house, we grilled out, had a good time, and, you know, it was just a good vibe, you know what I'm saying, being around friends, family, you're in your home, nice day outside, sunny, there's not a care in the world right now, at least for me. And I always looked at her as a person that I can trust. I always looked at her as someone that I wouldn't have to worry about, someone that had my best interests at heart. Um, always had um, someone he could trust, someone that had his best interests at heart, someone he didn't have to uh, worry about. Uh, I would say this. Uh, you definitely should be able to trust your spouse. You shouldn't distrust your spouse. But you have to know that, and I talk about this often, I talked about this yesterday, people are human and never put anyone on a pedestal to the point you think they can do no wrong or they won't do certain things. Your woman is capable of doing anything. You are capable of doing anything. Even, man, listen, man, you've done things you said you wouldn't do. You've done things you thought you would never do. Your woman's the same way. So don't put anything past your woman thinking she's above anything. Um, but yeah, there should be some some trust there. Uh, I don't believe in distrust if you if you man, but you have to understand and be uh, can't have your blinders on and think your woman won't do what these other women women do. 
you know, that's that's just naive. Um, and you're asking for trouble, man. You're asking for a hotel heartbreak. Most respect for her because, like, I knew that she cared for me. That's, that's, that's how I truly felt. But fast forward throughout that day, you know, family was still there. And then it's getting down to the evening. I'm outside of Grandma and her dad and stuff like that. We're having a good time chopping it up, shooting the breeze, you know, things that family do. And um, as the day went on, her family decided to stay the night with us, and we was going to go to breakfast in the morning. Um, so the night is winding down. Everyone is going to bed. Me and her go to bed. And, you know, at this point, I'm exhausted. It's like probably 11.30 p.m. Exhausted. Been grilling, been cooking, been socializing all day. Just tired. So she was falling asleep. I was falling asleep. But I was kind of tossing and turning a little bit in and out. So I think I fell asleep around like 12-ish. Woke back up around 1. Because I just kept hearing bzz, 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 ding, ding, like messages. So I was like, it's 1, 1 a.m. Usually she's not texting her girlfriends or anything like that. Because they got fans and husbands and stuff too. They don't be texting like that. So I was like, oh no. Well. So I kind of turned over a little bit. And... You know, I wanted to try to go back to sleep, so I went back to sleep, tried to, and it still hurt. So I kind of turned back over and kind of cuddled her a little bit. And then as I was cuddling a little bit, I kind of saw her phone. And then I saw a, a, a man's name on there that I'd never seen before. So I was like, 1.30 a.m., a man's name that I don't even know. This don't even sound, this don't even sound right. But I... So check this out, man. <laughs> There's so many problems with this right now. Listen, man, I'm not advocating uh, or supporting defending cheating, uh, but there are levels to cheating. Um, there, there's levels. And right here, I, I see total, total disrespect. Total disrespect, man. Total disrespect. For one, she ain't got this brother in check. The the, the guy, the side guy. He's calling at 1.30 a.m. She ain't got her stuff in check. Totally, totally disrespectful. For two, she has this man's name program in the phone. Totally disrespectful. Like, there's no uh, reverence or, or reverence for him or respect for him or any fear of what this brother may do if he found out. She got the brother, she got the side dude's name programmed in the phone. To totally disrespectful. Uh, so yeah, man, there's there's a, this is a mess here. I didn't press the issue right in there until I kept hearing the business. Why is this your business punishment? Yo, like, we texted this late, and I could tell that she was kind of startled a little bit because she probably thought I was asleep or in and out of sleep or in a deep sleep. So that's when she was like, nobody, do we do I was like, nah, who are you texting? Because I know she would tell me instantly who she texting. So, um, and then she went to me. So I was like, let me see your phone. And I don't, I've don't, i never been this type of guy to go through a phone or nothing like that. So I was like, let me see your phone. Because this don't even sound like it. She was like, why? She kept questioning why. So I just took the phone. So I was like, boom. Looked at the phone, there was a dude in there and they was just having this conversation. It looked like they was having a conversation throughout the whole entire day. And I was looking and I was seeing things like, I'm going to bring you a plate and this and that and all kinds of stuff. And I was like... See, man, this is this is emotional cheating. <laughs> I think I think um, a lot of people, a lot of brothers, um, and maybe women too. Uh, I'm a man, so I would have to have a woman on here to speak from a woman's perspective. But see, this is an emotional tie. This is she's cheating emotionally and physically. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. Man, fixing him a plate. Listen, man, this brother here has invited her family down. Uh, they're staying at his home overnight. They've been barbecuing, uh, laughing, celebrating all day in the backyard. But she's been texting this side dude all day. And, and saying she's going to fix him a plate. You're going to give another brother some food that I purchased with the money I earned and that I cooked. 
yeah, this is an emotional tie here she has. And that's a whole different thing, man. Totally, total lack of respect for this brother. But let's keep in mind, this is from his perspective. And heard her side. This is from his perspective. And, uh, you know, that's how people tell stories a lot of time, too. They don't tell, you know, what they could have done in the relationship, or what they didn't do in the relationship to make it better. So a lot of us play the victim. So let's keep that in mind. What? Who is this cat, yo? Like, this is crazy. So then she got upset because I guess I called her. So I was like, yo, who is this? Boom, boom, boom. And this is where, this is where it really got me. She was like, I was going to tell you. I was like, tell me what? What exactly was you going to tell me? You know what I'm saying? So then, since family is in the house, we decided to go outside because we didn't want to make a, a ruckus and all this inside since family was staying the night. So we went outside. See, <laughs> see, man, this, this is the problem, man. And people... People have mixed views on this, man, but I just believe a brother got to have some kind of some kind of nut inside of him, some some kind of uh, some darkness. And a woman got to know, like, my dude will go there. This dude is too polite. He's too nice. And she's too bold and too careless or just silly and, and nonchalant. She's talking about, I was going to tell you. What? Tell me that you're getting piped down? That's what you're going to tell me? Uh, or tell me that you, you're going to leave? You, you want a divorce what were you going to tell me and uh this brother saying he didn't want to cause a ruckus and so he was going to take it outside so they can talk about it listen man uh the brother's too nice too nice and they say nice guys do not finish first man they finish last this brother's too nice and let me tell you something whoever this other guy is He's totally different from this guy. This guy she's messing with on the side, he has an edge to him. I guarantee you, this brother has an edge. Probably some slight thug in him. Uh, Might be a professional, but he probably got a little slight thug in him, a little street in him. But he's totally different from this guy. I guarantee you, man. I guarantee you. I talk, walk, walk, boom, boom, boom. And it's just, she was just telling me about the situation, this and that, this and that. And the weird thing about this is I never suspected that any of this would ever happen. But I realized what she's... He never suspected, listen to his words, he never suspected that any of this would ever happen. Not that he didn't suspect that it was happening. I can understand that. He didn't suspect it was happening. But he put his woman on a high-ass pedestal to think she was not capable. Not capable of stepping out. Now I don't think you should be worried about it or or uh constantly be thinking about it or accusing. No, no, going through her, her, her purse, her phone. No. I, I don't believe in that. But to say your woman is not capable of doing that is foolish. It's foolish. We started hanging out with these new friends of hers. All of her friends was married, but all of them had bad marriages. All of her friends were married, but all of them had bad marriages. Listen, man, you are your environment. You are a product of your environment. And even though you may go into an environment with good intentions, with pure intentions, with no dirt, if you lay in that environment, you stay in that environment, you reside in that environment long enough, you will get some dirt on you. You you will. Some of this stuff will rub off on you. I don't care who you are. That's why it's important not to associate with certain people. You know, you can say hi, bye, keep it moving. But I'm telling you, man, if you're in those types of circles for long enough, long enough, they will take you under eventually. It could be the right time, the right moment, the right vibe, and you're a goner. Yeah, the wife was cheating on the husband, or the husband was cheating on the wife, and I was like, she shouldn't be hanging with them, but I can't control who she hanging with. Like, she just got these new group of friends where everybody had something going wrong in their marriages, and yet we're newlywed, and she's seeing this and that, and they're probably influencing her to do this. So all kinds of stuff like this is going through my head. Man, I just, I just had a relative uh, 
a relative, a close relative, try to get me to cover for them on some stuff, right? And uh, I refused. And so we fell out. Yeah, they got mad at me because I wouldn't cover uh, for them. And we fell out. Uh, words were exchanged. Uh, I called this person uh, a manipulator. And words were exchanged. And uh, it all boils down to I wouldn't cover for them. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't deceive. I wouldn't lie. And so uh, they got upset. And we hadn't spoken in uh, shit, maybe, maybe three weeks. Uh, ironically, this morning, they text me. Uh, but I hadn't even responded, man. I'm just thinking, do I even want to be around that energy? Yeah, man. So you got to be cognizant of this, man. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is, man. You got to protect your energy, protect your mind. And I'm telling you, man, this was a close relative, like close. So you got to do what's right for you. And um, it just made me realize, like, this is crazy. This, this is not the end of it, but at that moment, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I really couldn't process anything. So after we had a little walk, went back in, went to sleep, woke up that morning, and I just had a bad feeling in my gut. Had a walk, <laughs> came in with the sleep. I don't know, man. It just seems like something's missing. Or this is the nicest guy in the world. And uh, if he's the nicest guy in the world, this explains why this woman is acting how she's acting. Not that she's cheating. But the boldness of it and the disrespect of it, uh, the carelessness of it, unless she's just a silly woman, she's very careless and, and just don't give a damn. Uh, but it makes sense for her to, you know, act like that if he's this nice, if he's actually this nice, you know. Um, yeah, this, this is crazy, though. And we're supposed to go to breakfast with her parents. Saying I didn't feel right going to breakfast, I had to fake like I was sick because the situation really threw me for a loop. You know what I'm saying? So, mom. See, this is what I would do. This is what I do. I'm not doing all that, man. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, get with her dad. Me and him gonna go for a walk or a ride, and I'm saying, listen, man, I don't want you to think I'm acting weird or funny, but this is what's going on, and. uh you know, not to throw her under the bus, but this is what's going on. I ain't going to fake it and shake it. But this might be the last time you see me. This may be the last time you see us together. I don't know. But this is what's going on. And uh, so, so yeah, I ain't going to breakfast with, with y'all, man. I'm going to stay back. Or I might go to breakfast. All depends. But uh, I'm going to have that talk with her father, man to man, one on one. So that's just what it is. Mom couldn't make it to the Mother's Day um, cookout, so we ended up going to um, my mom's spot for something. So had to fake the funk there. Had to fake the funk like everything was going good, car ride, not really talking on the way back, talk a little bit about what was going on. And then we got back in the home, and then that's when we really had the conversation later that night where, you know, like, okay, what's up? What happened? Who this dude is? What's the relationship? How y'all know each other? Boom, boom, boom. Come to find out, I remember about three months before me and her started like going to the gym together, things like this. And she was telling me about this trainer that had this new program. And she was like, yo, we should go to this camp since we're going to the gym. It'll be cool for us to go as a couple. Boom, boom, boom. I was like, all right, cool. Never ended up going, but I guess she continued to talk to the trainer. So the guy was a trainer, and uh, and 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 so they kind of had a little bit of history, and he knew that she was married, and of course, dudes don't really care like that. It's up to the woman to neglect that. So I can't even be mad at the dude. Like I'm mad at the disrespect for him to come at a married woman, but I can't be mad at him because he can only do what she We knew they was. We got to try to get through this. You know what I'm saying? So check this out, man. Uh, yeah, he shouldn't be mad at that dude at all. That dude has no allegiance to him. Uh, once again, he's putting people on the pedestal, thinking people should do better and, and know better and act better. That man has no allegiance. That trainer has no allegiance to this brother. 
uh, listen, that's just what it is, man. Your, your own blood will, will pipe down your woman uh, if, if, uh, if, if, you know, the, uh, the opportunity opportunity exists or presents itself and if she's down with it. So, yeah, don't put anybody on the pedestal, especially a stranger, brother. Another thing, I do feel a way. Now, this might be chauvinistic. Uh, I do feel a way about brothers allowing their allowing their woman to be taught by other men. I know this is a big thing in the black church, maybe church period. I don't think it's good. I don't think it works out at the end where another man is teaching your woman. No, no, man. Listen, man, the whole workout thing, you can hit those books, hit the internet, and, and uh, you know, do, do your research, and you and your woman can come up with a regimen yourself. You can go to the gym together and already have a, a, a regimen set on what you want to do and how you want to do it. You don't need a trainer for that. All this stuff is on the internet. You don't need a trainer. You don't need another brother pushing your woman to excellence. You should be able to do that. So if this brother's asking for trouble, have another brother motivate his woman. You know what I'm saying? Send his woman in, in leotard or whatever you, you uh, uh, what do you call it? the stretch pants or the leggings. You know, I don't know how she's built. But anyway, sweating, exhausted, and being motivated and inspired <laughs> by another man being pushed to the limit by another man you ask for trouble and then you don't show up and you send her to him by herself this brother's naive he's naive you know i don't know you know his environment he grew up in if he had some big brothers some older cousins uh, a father i don't know but uh, if he's raised by a single mother i don't know but but uh this brother's really naive very trusting and uh yeah i see a few mistakes here so yeah i, I don't agree with this move and the old me in this situation would be like nah it's dead right then and there but i was like since we knew him boys and since we just got married and since we told since she supposed to try to work with things i'm gonna try to work with you so i was like look we can get through this but i'm gonna need you to delete this guy off social media mm, what if they don't i'm gonna need for you to lose all connection with this guy if you're not interested in this guy, if you want to be with this guy and you're interested, let me know now <laughs> and we can talk about all that. You know, I... listen, man, uh, the woman has to choose you. You can't give her an ultimatum on choosing you. You can't make her do anything. You, you think you can make her, but you can't make a woman do anything. She has to choose you. She has to choose you, man. I talk about this in several videos. Your woman has to choose you. She should have been coming at him saying, I will give this up. I will do this. She should have been crying. She should have been on her knees asking for forgiveness. And please don't leave me. She did none of that. She did none of that. She should have been coming to him saying what she would do to get back in good graces. She did none of that. So, yeah, things are out of order right here. Totally out of order. And this is part of this brother's problem. It's out of order, man. Um, yeah, he, he has to take the reins of his relationship, either this relationship or moving forward in another relationship. But yeah, she just got too much freedom, man. Saying that we can move away from each other, whatever. But let me know. So she's like, no, I can delete him. Two days later, um, I remember getting home before her. And she's not home yet. But her iPad is in the room. I'm trying. I just got home, took a shower, about to take a nap. I see her iPad is on my nightstand. And then I see this guy, the same on the iPad. And I was like, I thought she was, was going to stop talking to the dude. Like, what's going on? So I tapped him, open the iPad. She was like, I'm on the way home. Don't text me. Let me text you. And then at that moment, that's when I know. I got a problem on my hands. You know what I'm saying? As a man, you do not want this problem on your hands. You do not want your woman going behind your back, sneaking, lying, and doing all this. And you just got married. And
and trying to work on things like that, and I'm willing to give you another chance. So, when she got home, I like, I didn't know anything. I like, I didn't know anything. She got home, she took a shower, boom, boom, boom. And she said she was going to dinner with one of her friends. I said, all right, go to dinner. Go to dinner with one of the, I don't know if she was with the friend or him. I don't know. But I already had the intel that I needed that they was going to continue to communicate. So then when she left, I opened the iPad up again. And I noticed that they was trying to plan going to the mountains together in North Carolina and trying to figure out a way for her to get there and this and that. I'm like, yo, that's when it hit me. That's when it hit me, man. Like, as a man, that's the worst feeling you can ever feel. When you've been disrespected, lied to, betrayed by someone that you love. And I never, ever felt pain like this a day in my life. And still to this day, I still haven't felt a pain that I felt when I saw those messages. And when I realized she was lying, and I never felt that type of pain. At that moment, I just remember dropping down to the bed and just crying, bro. I was crying out of anger, upset. I didn't know how to feel. Like, I, I really... Yeah, this brother is uh, non-confrontational. He was afraid of losing her. He didn't want to piss her off. He didn't want to upset her. He didn't want her to leave. So he kept his thoughts to himself. He kept his, his uh, frustration and his anger to himself because he didn't want to piss her off and have her leave. Yeah, he, he placed her above him. And that's the worst thing you could ever do. Uh, yeah, yeah, this brother's young, though. You know, hopefully he can rebound from this. Yeah, go to, I have a link in the bio, or in the description, I'm sorry. And, uh, yeah, you can watch the full video. Yeah, it's an interesting video. And, uh, you know, I wish this young brother the best. And the young lady. Listen, man. You know, we people can, you know, call her a bunch of names. But we got to keep in mind, too, that she's young, too. And this is his perspective. Uh, but uh, she's young, too. She makes mistakes. She's going to make mistakes. going to make more mistakes. He's going to make mistakes. You know, hopefully uh, this situation doesn't uh, uh, make him, you know, really bitter and, and turn turn him dark to where he becomes what she is or what she was or what she did. And so, uh, you know, that happens, too. So, uh, yeah, man, hopefully they figure it out. You know, uh, they're young. They can rebound. But, uh, yeah, man, they need to be alone. They need to learn themselves, live a little. And I'm not, I'm not saying get out there and start, you know, horn. Uh, but just get to know yourself. Spend some time alone with yourself. Uh, yeah, this this happened too fast. They got married too fast. But, yeah, check out this brother's video, man. He has some great content, uh, you know, be a young brother. So, yeah, check him out. As always, toasters, from me to you, love, peace.